okay, well, then we should be very happy and, you know, okay, we're done. Uh, I don't know that that's sound. And I think the reason why is I don't think uh, they were tasked, and therefore I don't think they can be criticized for this, but I don't think um, much attention, if any, was given to the possibility that that organizing principle may be giving way to a new one. And I think the new one can be put under the moniker uh, new generation warfare. I'm a little less comfortable with fifth generation warfare because when I start reading this stuff, I, I get I get a headache. Uh, and I'm not sure I entirely understand new generation warfare. Uh, and I'm not even sure the people who write about it do. But in fairness, the, the first uh, writings on Air war theory were garbled and confused too. <laughs> so I don't know that that should be disqualifying. Um, you know, they had a, a problem in air war theory writing about what they meant by the strategic center or what exactly it meant to knock out the military center or, or the or the uh, the political center and, and which of these targets because uh, they also talked about precision targeting. It should have precedence in what the order should be. So uh, similar kinds of problems with new war, uh, new generation warfare writings, uh, you know, it could use improvement and scholarship and everything else. But give you some wrong rough right idea. Let's go to the next slide. Um, now this fellow is pretty important. Uh, let me see if I can pronounce his name properly. Jaris, hang on here. Uh, Jaris Moff. Jaris Moff. I, I've probably slaughtered it. Uh, but he is the chief of the general staff, or was, in, in Russia, and uh, you know has sort of been consumed uh, or, 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 or suffered uh, for going into the Ukraine war. But essentially, this man uh, you know, is, it needs to be read. <laughs> uh, around uh, 2013 or so, he started writing about a, a, a different concept of warfare, where instead of threatening to obliterate physically uh, concentrations of military, industrial, political, or demographic uh, capital uh, as a sort of a, a lever in war, that uh, instead of going, doing that to disable a nation, Oh, you, he suggested you could disable a nation without doing that, but instead uh, by using uh, information campaigns that would uh, undo the will of the enemy and using data and information to target munitions against key nodes that would paralyze the enemy if it chose to even continue to fight. And uh, this roughly, I mean very roughly, is what we're seeing going on now in the Ukraine war. Now this is, it's hard to see because many of us haven't watched enough or read enough about the Second and First World War. But as I laid out before you, um, the levels of destruction and the periods in which that destruction was inflicted in the Second World War with aerial bombing were stunning. You know, 48 hours, 100,000 people and an entire city burned to the ground. Uh, how does that compare to Ukraine? Now, Ukraine, the Russians really have not mastered precision guidance as much as we think we have. Um, but for all of their, their, their uh, you know, uh, inadequacies, uh, the Russians have killed, according to most accounts, and I'm sure the numbers are, you know, be slightly debated to say the least, something on the order of 10 to 11,000 Ukrainian civilians over two years. And it wasn't for a lack of trying or throwing munitions. It's what they aimed at and what they were trying to accomplish. Yes, they were have been incredibly brutal. But they wanted digital displays to dismay and, and force the Ukrainians to give up uh, as much as simply trying to knock out things. And uh, when they go after infrastructure, 
it's with relative precision. I mean, they knock out specific plants, specific transformers. 